Hello everyone, this is CJ and Ovo992 and today we're back for another brand new video. A brand new video talking about a brand new game where I'm not sitting here in the freaking dark. Nah, 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 nah. We're actually here in some light to talk about an entire game of football and that's much more glorious than what we were doing not too long ago because we went ahead and played our second pre-season game where again we got to play two halves and finish off the match. We got to play and bring in some players, introduce some, see what they've got and again get an honest look at where we are and where we need to be over the next couple of games and the things we need to sharpen up on and the things we need to work on to get us to where we want to be when the season starts off versus Livingston. So I, it is going to be a game recap where we discuss a couple things but it's not going to be the same standard of a recap because again it is early pre-season, you're getting early pre-season vibes. These are a couple of things that stood out to me regarding the game and I, let's get involved and talk about Rangers 2, Blackpool. One. And just before we do get into the game recap, I just want to give a special shout out to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel. We've now hit over 54,000 and we are rapidly, and I mean rapidly, closing in on the dream of 55k. So to everyone who's supported long term and who's just recently got here and became a part of our community, I greatly, greatly appreciate it as we go marching freaking on. But I know he's didn't want to hear that, he's wanting to hear about the football. So let's dive in then, shall we? Because I think I'm not going to be breaking anyone's illusions about the game of football, how we played, or that despite the win and saying the way we started this game of football was a bit crapola. I mean, honestly, we played better in the second half versus Sunderland. And if you know, you freaking know, because we're again, we well, were just very slack on the ball. Things were bouncing off our players, and I know that's an indication of where we are in pre-season, but Blackpool were sniffing right out of that and coming after us and nipping at our heels very like Sunderland in the first half because it was them that had a couple of chances in the opening 10 minutes. It was them who had an, a good long shot that was just over the bar. It was them that broke into the box and lifted a shot that should have really burst the back of the net, but again, it lifted it over. And it was them who missed a free header I don't know, two, three yards out, where again, should the goalie come and get that for me? Aye, but by God, was that an easy one for the boy, but we go away way at Troops. And something else we got away with, by the way, in the opening 25 minutes of this game was Ryan Kent gone doing more than my Wi-Fi connection. It just wasn't happening in the first 25 minutes and you were saying, oh no, it's going to be one of these irritating workouts. But to be fair to the Rangers side, I thought the longer the first half went in and again, the more experience that we got because I know I know I keep referring to it and I keep joking, there is 45 minutes of play that has been ripped off our pre-season schedule that the players were supposed to be in this direction, so we are slightly behind in our preparations for next season, at no faults of their own, you know, apart from the guy that was paying the electricity bill over in Portugal, but we are a little bit behind and it's just taken us a wee bit of time to get going in the game, but like I said, after about 20-25 minutes of this match, we started to zip about, Ryan Kent started to play a little bit angry and if you watch his channel, you no, I like it when Kent's engaged. I like it when Kent gets wound up. I like it when someone nails him, shouts him, and he has to do that. Because for me, an angry Ryan Kent is the best Ryan Kent that we get. And he started to drop the shoulder, started to bring others into play, and it started to tick along. We said, right, there's going to be something in this first half. And that perfectly coincides with us getting that something in the first half where again it was some good sharp movement, the ball eventually gets played beautifully down the right hand side. Now I'm pretty sure it's actually James Sands that finds Tavani here, wonderful ball down the right hand side, great touch by the skipper and he just dips it, just dips it right into the money and Kolak to be fair to him runs onto the ball and it's a clean, clean, clean connection because if he hits it any other way, the goalkeeper's getting it because to be fair, the goalie's made himself very big, he's very close, but that shows you the finisher that Kolak is, the fact that he's able to run onto this and make it look as easy as it was because it looked an easy finish, people, but by God, it wasn't, and anyone who's played the game can testify to that and realise how hard that chance was to take, and he's away celebrating, but again, that offside flag goes up, and this one, there's no controversy or that, no, there would be a pre-season, but aye, Kolak's about four yards offside, but again, that's going to take time to work on, I think he's expecting Tavernier to drive on with the ball a little bit quicker then, give him the ball, but we know Tavernier likes to hit it early, but this is what these games are for, to try and fine-tune what these players actually like, but again, 
Was it disappointing he was offside? Aye, but did I see enough from that run and finish to be excited and say, aye, you were right to talk him up in the preview videos and the reaction videos and everything like that? Yes, yes, I am so very, very excited that he did his job of putting the ball in the back of net. A couple more games under his belt and a lot more communication between him and the skipper. I can see that offside. Not being a problem. But aye, despite us building into the game and starting to get some gorgeous playing for me, Glenn Kamara really started to sparkle at the end of that first half. Like some of his turns and his runs and everything like that, they, they couldn't deal with him. He was very unlucky with a couple of things, either bouncing off him at the last or somebody coming in for a thing. But he looks sharp and he looks like, almost like he's realised everyone's forgetting about Glenn Kamara, you know what I mean? Like no one's talking about Kamara going in to this season and the way he played that close to Kolak is definitely something that we need to um, talk about in today's video because that is something we mentioned in the last couple of signing videos about that guy that can play just behind the striker with their back to goal. Well, did you see how Glenn Kamara was lined up in this game? It wasn't he? in a midfield three. The two midfielders were sitting, Jacko and Lundstrom, and Kamara was right up there next to the striker. That's something I've been saying on the channel that Giovanni has had in every single team that he's managed from final to even his short time over in China. He likes that guy in that hole with his back to go and aye, Kamara gets his opportunity for me. He sparkled in that first, first half, sorry, but again, we never really done enough to put the ball in at the back and eight despite us getting more minutes in the legs and aye, that takes us into half time where we needed and an injection, and an injection we have signed. I was going, oh, get Rabi on. Get Rabi, get Lawrence on right now, and give them the minutes that they badly, badly crave. And then they're jogging out at half time, and I'm hearing the commentator say there's been three subs, and I'm like, <laughs> Rabi, get on, big man. Day some. Oh, I can't even squat down my legs, they're killing me. I'm getting old these days. But come on, son, get a wee run in us. And then I hear the commentator say Arfield and Stephen Davis is coming on. Now, you know I love Stephen Davis, all right? I love Stephen Davis that much that, I have a, that if I had a firstborn that was going to be born in the next 15 to 20 minutes, there'd be a high likelihood that they would be called Stephen or called Davis. But it's just one of those things you talk about pre-season. I want the new boys getting in. So by the time the Livingston game comes about, we're not asking questions at the end. Like, hi there, are we ever going to see Lawrence? And then we get the response back, yeah, they just need some time to adjust to the squad. Use pre-season and get them adjusted. So I was a wee bit just like, oh God, here's two guys coming on that didn't need any time to adjust to the squad. They've been in the squad for a long time. But I've got to be said that despite all my jokes about Scotty Arfield, never, you know what I think of Stephen Davis. And he was the only one out of all the contract extensions this season, apart from Goldson, obviously, but McGregor, Arfield and all that, Davis was the only one I thought could inject something into your team this season. And I thought he was brilliant when he come on and he'll probably go underneath the radar because there is a lot to talk about but again he's still the best at getting the ball and moving the ball quickly so I thought he was brilliant Arfield people know where I stand now I didn't get it especially when we move 10-15 minutes into the second half and we introduced the substitutes I'm talking about Wee Rab I'm talking about Lawrence I'm talking about John Souter well done to all three of them making their first starts or first appearances sorry for the football club and I'm talking about Charlie McCann who if you're a long time viewer of this channel I know I've not been as good over the last five six months because I've been dealing with my own issues up here but when we were making videos non-stop discussing young players and following these lads' journeys and everything like that. Charlie McCann was one of those guys we talked about as being a possible something. And every time you see this lad, you can just see it. And I wanted to mention him next when I'm talking about an Arfield because for me, I think Charlie can come in and do the exact role right now than what we're asking Scotty Arfield today. And I genuinely, genuinely believe that. And I'd like to see Charlie getting more opportunities because what's the first thing he's done? In the game, he chased after a ball that was over hit and done a beautiful back heel to keep it alive and keep it in the game. This isn't a guy who's bogged down by pressure or worry or stress about playing for Rangers. He struts out there like he knows he's a Stephen Davis regen and I. We're going to talk about Mayer in the next five minutes, but for me, he was absolutely standing in the game. And I know it just goes round and round my head that he should be in the rotation where Arfield is right now because he is the future, and if he continues to play and continues to develop the way he is, the future's bright. Then he sue me, Orange. Are they even a thing? Now, for the OCD that's currently watching today's video, be like, wait a minute, CJ, we've just went from Scotty Arfield and Davis, he subbed, 
to the next subs that happened in the 60th minute. Did you know miss the first goal in the game? Well, again, this isn't a traditional recap. I just wanted to talk about the subs and where I felt like we could naturally go and where we could be going in the future because, yes, we did take the lead just before the raft of substitutions that we ended up happening in the game. And the way we actually took the lead in the game was absolutely gorgeous. And again, the goal, of course, starts with Tavernier. New season, same guy as this driving force for this squad on our chest people as he just gets the ball again and it's a wonderful cross in and again him and Kolak I think just miss each other just by inches and the ball ends up going to the other end of the park but because we do play this more 3-5-2 formation where the full backs are able to just really go after them and we can really pin after teams and I think that's the aggressive nature we're going to see this year we've got two men out on the left hand side putting pressure on the Blackpool boy who yes ends up being a wee bit too casual on the football takes maybe a couple mere touches but again that's because there's nothing easy for him and he ends up trying to get a fit in it hits off Barisic it hits off Farfield I think Barisic ends up nicking his fit in this is how I remember it happening just before it falls back to a Blackpool player and then he just runs he starts curling in and I'm thinking to myself it's Barisic so he's probably going to try and go for the pass but then he picks out the old four iron in the right dish people he lines it up and he just curls it into the bottom bin. And I couldn't believe it. He scored a right foot, foot shot, people. I can't even speak it. Because I didn't freaking believe it. And you know what's funny? It's probably a goal like that was only ever going to open the scoring in a game as wild and bit iffy as this one actually is. Again, for both teams, it was a pre-season right-footed Barisic who opened the scoring. And after that door was open again, we brought in more changes. And the changes really started to inject more life. And that's where I want to go next with it. Because again, we've talked about why we're looking iffy at the start of games. Or that. It's just because we've not had the experience. So I've tried to address that. We've talked about the substitutions and everything. We've talked about Ryan Kent, who I know a lot of people's talking about online. And where I want to go next is going to be the Rabbies coming into this team. Because again, we spoke and I was very, very high on him and very excited because of what he could do when he picks the ball up and just runs. And I think you saw it very early on in his Rangers career with his two main powerful runs that he had. One of his first touches and a Rangers top was picking the ball up, driving. 30, 40 yards with the football, getting in to the box and it ends up pulling it back right to the six yard box but no one's gambled, no one's there and again I think Scotty Affield's left planted at the edge of the box, no moving or anything like that but that was a great run and if anyone had anticipated a little bit better or gambled more in the box we could be talking about an assist for Rabi but again promising and again potential and that happened just five, ten minutes after that as the ball gets chucked to him on the sideline, now if you're a Rangers fan, I know exactly what normally happens when we take throw-ins. We normally either throw it right to the opposition or we end up passing it all the way back to the halfway line. That's what we do at this club. But we threw it to Rabi and Rabi just went, well, I'm going to run forward with the football. And he just skinned one player. He drove into the box and his first instinct again is to have a pop and he's very, very close on catching the goalkeeper out on the near freaking post. But I love that people, that's why I was excited about him because he isn't the pass back, keep everyone safe, safe type. A player, he's gone, he wants to drive forward and he wants to be an attacking asset and I think everyone who saw that game will see Rabi and even Lawrence who had a couple of nutmegs and a couple driving runs and even a couple tackles gone back by. We can see what these players can offer us but I, where we're talking about the new signings and how promising they are, Charlie McCann, We've touched on him already, what I think of the lad and where I think he could go. He had a couple of delicious wee back heels in the game, but the goal that really is going to put some real heat in his name now, deservedly so, by the way, because it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a corner whipped in, and big catch. You can say what you want about the lad, but we're a real threat when he's in the box, and we're a real better defensive um, unit from corners and everything like that when he's in there, because he just gets his head on everything, but he's wrestling with the big centre back, and now I'm not sure if it hits Katic or hits the big centre half, but it ends up dropping to the edge of the box, this is not an easy opportunity by any stretch of the imagination, but we Charlie runs up like he's got the golden ticket and he's about to get in to the factories, he just runs up there and releases it all and he just smashes it into the bo bottom of the net, and it, honestly it's absolutely gorgeous, if you haven't seen the goal, go and find it online that is our guy that's sitting in our academy right now and by god 
is he looking good? Wonderful goal, wonderful moment, and it was great to see. And now we're sitting 2 and a lot, absolutely smacking beers and enjoying our life. I mean, somebody had a Jason Holt doll at one point walking about the stadium. We'll talk about that another day, but aye, it was a glorious last 10, 50 minutes. Glenn Middleton came on for Kolak, who again hasn't scored, but you can see where he is. And for me, his link up play, his movement, there's enough to be seen, even with his finish that was offside. And just when you think we're seeing the game out nicely, there's just always a wrench in the work. But to be fair, Blackpool gorgeous one too. They end up nutmegging and Katic, by the way, but there's nothing the big man could do. That's just a good move. It's just a good... But sometimes you just get beat by an individual moment and it happens in football and the finish is brilliant as well as John Souter and I can't remember who... It was, I can't remember who else. I do apologise about that, but neither of them could do anything anyway. It's brilliant goal and now it's 2-1 and to be fair, if we're being honest, me and they, they well and truly deserved that goal, especially during the first half before we started to take over the game and the amount of chances they missed, but that's it, people, at finished. Rangers 2, Blackpool 1. We've tried to discuss a couple of key points and a couple of key players for our team, and I, I think it's a step in the right direction. Is that a perfect game for Rangers where we're dominating from A to B and looking outstanding or that? No, but remember... This is our second game. We only played half a game in our first pre-season match. It is early season vibes, but the longer the game went on, the mere bite that got into the game, I thought you could see, right, we're sharpening up here, moving in the right direction, and I, it's an important step as we move forward, but that's my thoughts on the game. What about you? Let me know down in the comments section below. Now, you've seen a wee bit more of Kolak. What did you think? Once you've got your wee taster of Rabi and Lawrence and everything like that, what you think? And let me know down in the comment section below. I love speaking to you here. And again, I love it when he's talking to each other and everything as well. We've got a real community here, and that's why we've lasted the entire time that we have. Long is the black hair gone here, people, but the nation moves on, so... That's me all done and dusted. I look forward to seeing your comments. And until next time, which should be a day or two, if not the most exciting and happiest video about a young Calvin Bassey. But aye, prepare yourselves for that, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. All the best and bye-bye.